Welcome back to another Surgery Tip Clip. A few months ago, my nephew and his wife had a baby boy. And my nephew's wife is a big fan of Lilo and Stitch. And she asked if I would make a cushion cover for a window seat in the nursery. So I did that and I posted photos of it on Instagram. And I had a number of requests for people to ask how I use the cording foot on that. Now, if you check back on a previous tip clip, you'll see I use the cording foot for inserting a zipper in the overlock mode. But I thought, well, since a few people want to see it using it in its traditional manner, I would just recreate a little bit of what I did. Now, I unfortunately sent the excess Lilo and Stitch fabric down to South Carolina with the cushion cover. So I don't have that, but um, I can show you a reasonable facsimile on different fabric. So let's get started. Before we start, I just wanted to show you the components of what I'll be using. I have filler cord and you can purchase that at any sewing machine dealer shop or um, a lot of the big box stores carried it as well. It's very inexpensive. And I've cut strips of fabric on the bias and I cut them two inches wide, which is considerably wider than I'll need to wrap around this with cord. You can see, let me just show you. I can get it apart from that. And I'll show you a quick trick that I think is pretty nifty. And I almost said slick, but a slick trick. But um, anyway, we'll, I'll show you a trick for trimming down that seam allowance that doesn't take any time at all. And we'll use some fabric too. This is just a, kind of a quilting weight cotton, and which is the same weight as the one I used for the cushion cover. Now, actually, on that one, I felt that it was a little on the flimsy side for a cushion cover. So what I did was I fused some batting to it and um, did some grid quilting just to give it a little more body and make it look a little bit nicer. But for the demonstration today, we'll just use it as is. And the star of this tip clip is the cording foot or the piping foot. Some companies may call it a piping foot, cording foot. It's all the same thing. But the thing that's kind of nifty about it and makes it so cool to use is this channel that runs along the bottom. Now, this is a five millimeter wide channel. Some machines have a three millimeter wide. Some may vary and have different sizes, but this one is five millimeters. And let me just show you how the cording is going to fit right in there and run along very, very easily when the foot is put down. So we'll go to the machine and we'll show you that great foot in action. I have my machine set up with my cording foot on. Now for the first pass, I am just going to wrap the fabric, which is again cut on the bias, around my cording. And I have my stitch length on four because I don't want too, too much thread buildup on this. And uh, because I'm gonna run it through again with a four thread overlock stitch. Right now I have the right overlock needle in and I don't want the stitching line, this first stitching line, right next to the cording because I don't wanna take a chance that any of it is gonna peek out and be visible from uh, when the seam on the fabric is sewn together. So I'm just gonna keep that a little farther away. But um, the cool thing about cutting your fabric a little wider is number one, it makes it much easier to handle. And also because your serger has a blade on it, it's going to trim that off and get it to the right seam allowance for what you want to do with the actual fabric. So what I'm going to do, I always cut my cording a little bit longer than the fabric, it's just so I can get it under the little channel that I showed you. And some of it is peeking out from in back of the presser foot. So I've got this wrapped around and I've got it on both sides. And again, having my fabric a little bit longer or a little bit wider than I need makes it just easier to handle. There's more to grab onto rather than trying to grab onto a tiny little um, 5 eighths or 3 eighths inch seam or half inch. So I'm going to get going. And I have my um, stitch length on four, again, just to um, encase the cording and not have a lot of thread buildup on this. 
and that cording is just following along and it's going to look loose when I take it out, which is exactly what I want. It's not a tight encasement on this first pass, but whoops, but that will tighten right up when we do the final pass. You can see it coming through and I've put in a different color thread just so that you can see everything clearly. And if your edges, as you turn your fabric, you can see they're not perfectly even, but it doesn't matter because that's going to get trimmed off anyway, as long as you've got enough to cover both edges. And that little channel makes it so great because it's accurate from beginning to end. And I don't bother pinning simply because it's pretty easy to manage a narrow piece of fabric. It's not, it's not that much to keep track of. Let me just cut my thread tail. And this is what we have so far. So you can see it's fully encased, but loose. There's still plenty of room in here. It's not a tight cover on my cording. So the next step is to put a second needle in for a four thread overlock. And you can see that that stitch is pretty long. So it's not a lot of thread on there. So I'm going to just change the settings on my machine and I'll be right back. I've put in my left overlock needle. So now we're going to do a four thread overlock stitch. And I think that's a good choice for a stitch for this particular type of um, serging because it's sturdy and the welting on the um, cushions is right on the edge. So that area gets some wear and tear just from sitting on it. And um, I have my fabric and I'm just going to show you as I go down, I'm not going to do the whole side seam, but because I want to get close to the um, corner so I can show you how to get around the corner smoothly with this particular technique. Now, um, I mentioned before that if you're concerned about thread buildup, you could do this first pass on your sewing machine. And again, because your fabric strip is wide, it was two inches to begin with it would not be cut off on your sewing machine because there isn't a blade. But the cool thing is that again, with your serger, when you go to do that final pass, you can, um, you'll be trimming off the fabric. But if you're concerned about it being even and being able to line up all of the edges, what you can do is use your serger like a cutting machine, take out the needles, cut out the thread and just, run your cording through after you've stitched it on your sewing machine. Again, put the cording in the channel and just run it through and um, just cut off the excess seam allowance. And that's what I actually did on the cushion cover um, for my nephew's baby, because I knew that there was going to be a lot of bulk with the quilting. So to eliminate just a tiny bit of it. I ran the cording through on my sewing machine first, and then I took out my needles, removed the thread and just trimmed off the seam allowance, um, without any, um, stitching going on at all. And then I worked on it, uh, putting it between the fabric layers. So that's where we're at now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring this down and again. I don't want you to have to watch me do the whole seam. I'll bring this down. I'm lining up the edge of my um, fabric with the cushion covers and I'm going to encase it like a sandwich, just like this. And it's all right sides together. So I'll put this here. And, and again, if you wanted to, you could trim off. You don't necessarily have to line up those edges absolutely perfectly, but as long as your cording is in that little channel, you should be fine. Let me get my needles up so that I can get everything under the foot just where I want it. And again, 
if you want to trim off a little bit of your fabric edge, that's perfectly fine. And I've shortened up my stitch length to, oh, let's, let's do it at about maybe 2.5 to 3, depending on the weight of your fabric and what you think is a good, good choice for that. So I'm just going to start stitching. And I'm basically kind of stitching blind because the cording is the filling in the sandwich. It's right between the two layers of fabric that are right sides together. But because I have that channel to guide the cord, I'm not worried about it going off, um, off center. So I'm just going to start stitching along. And now that I'm within a couple of inches of the corner, what I want to do is I'm going to make a few clips and this is going to make it easy to turn. And these clips are about a quarter inch to eh, three eighths of an inch, something like that, to make it easy to turn the corner smoothly and get it out of the way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it before I need to and just keep stitching straight and right off the fabric just like that trim it and now I can turn the corner easily because I've got those clips and I'm just going to get it seated right back in the channel again, get everything all organized correctly and continue down the second edge. And I'm not going to go across the whole thing. I just want to be able to show you how I did that corner. And I think I'll trim off right here. And let's take a look and see what it looks like. So it looks pretty nice. It's smooth, it's flat. And I would give that seam a little bit of a press, but you can see how nicely that um, little foot works as a channel. And you can see, again, you don't see that first line of stitching at all. The fourth thread, because the needle is farther left, um, covers that up and you get a nice smooth turn on the corner and you have hidden that first line of stitching. So it's great. So I hope you get to try it out. And if you have any questions about it, just send them in. Thanks for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free and I will send you notices when I post a new tip clip. And as always, if you have a suggestion for a future one, send it along. I do listen and thank you for your suggestions. See you again soon.